हाय गाइस इन दिस वीडियो इन दिस पॉडकास्ट यू आर गोइंग टू मीट अभिप्राय अभिप्राय he was from tolani maritime institute to become a marine engineer but very soon realized that he does not want to sail as marine engineer on ship anymore and surveyor becoming a surveyor is his true calling so in podcast we will get, get to know his journey ki kab unhone decide kiya and how is his life as a surveyor and there are a lot more other videos coming soon so please watch and you'll get to know ki surveyor ki life kaise hoti hai kya kya challenges hota hai kya dekhna hai kya nahi dekhna hai hi everyone jai hind jai bharat jai mata di today i have got mr abhi pray with me Uh, he is a he is presently a surveyor in Lloyd's. जो लोग नहीं जानते this video is very important because right now through this video you are going to know about the life of a surveyor, the challenges that a surveyor faces, what a, what kind of remuneration a surveyor can expect in India or abroad, a general view opinion based from Abhipraya coming out here, and about his life. कि why did he do marine engineering or what did he do, or then why did he quit sailing? Why did you look up this job, and what are the pros and cons about this? So let's just start. Hi, Abhi Pray Ji. Thank you very much for joining our Mochi Navy Gold. Very, very thank you. Hi, Pranit. Well, thanks first of all for uh, contacting me and calling me for this lovely uh, video and a chat. It's always great to uh, meet uh, new people, almost on daily basis, and uh, you know, sharing ideas and knowledge is what. it's all about and i completely believe in it so thank you once again thank you so uh, my first question to you is a brief dis- uh, about your life early journey from where you are and why did you join mochane where did you do your engineering everything right sure so basically see when i was in 10th and 11th grade you know we all were planning that you know we would give uh, uh, exams for you know at our times it used to be i to play and uh, iits were the the best ones where everyone wanted to go very well, still so, now that is yes it's still, <laughs> it's still now is the thing so yeah well when well when that didn't work out then uh, i was like fine you know i have to look either i have to take a year off and look and prepare for it again or look for other uh, uh, you know things as to in my career whether this is whether it is something or engineering hardcore engineering something which i am looking for or there can be some other areas where i can uh, you know widen my horizon so it happens so that one of my uh, mother's uh, friend and their son was in merchant navy or uh, their son was in iit sorry and uh, i happened to speak to the gentleman and i just wanted to get an idea like what we are doing today as to how how the life was in iit but my main aim was at that point of time was the salary and i happened to ask him that how much would an iit and make or how much would a merchant navy officer would make and i happened to get an answer which was almost on the same uh, par value so i then realized why do i you know waste my time one year and prepare for iit rather than that let's join merchant navy and things everything fall into place in a way you know i tried i gave an exam in emet at that time the musk was doing dual certification in emet it was their first year and then uh, i also happened to give you know entrance exam for tolani tolani was very quick pretty straightforward i managed to get in and we we did the course from there uh, as a marine engineer so that was sort of a journey and the plan which which happened and it all happened in a click you know because i was completely clueless as to what i was i was supposed to do and then within two weeks or three weeks i i was you know already enrolled in the uh-huh. merchant uh, marine engineering course so four years as a marine engineer and you got the job i suppose so how long did you sail how was your experience in short and then why did you quit sailing Sure. So I I was uh, you know I was working on chemical tankers and product tankers, and um and so we had this phase of uh, you know uh, the internship where we would do our internship and we could come back to the college to the exams, final exams. So that was the first sale which I did. That was about for four months. and uh, then when i completed my marine engineering i did another vessel for around 6 months even though i never i had planned on my first ship that this is something which is not meant for me 
I still gave it a go and I did a second shift just to make make sure whether I was doing a mistake or not. So and I I think I did did the right thing. You know, mercenary is not for everyone. And uh, there there is a lot which goes into, you know, running the ship on every day, the operational wise. So that was my tenure on board the ships. The this video goes like Merchant Navy is not for everyone. I am a survivor. I am a surveyor right now. <laughs> this <laughs> nice. This looks nice. Yeah, it can uh, be. It can be. But it it came out very well. So you just did right. two sales as an engineer, and then you decided that this is not made for me. What made you decide that this is not made for you? Were, were the it were was it staying away from family? Were, were it the hardships out there? So what made you realize that no, this is not made for me? Yes. So as you rightly said, you know, it was a, like a collective uh, things which happened on, you know, daily basis or monthly basis, which, you know, sort of it, it, it happened so that it, it, a bubble was being made and then it burst one day. So things like you mentioned, internet connectivity uh, during, you know, the time it was 2009-10 was an issue. We were writing long emails to, you know, back homes and uh, to our partners at that time and I was uh, we, the, the calling <laughs> and it was pretty yes, expensive. That was quite a challenge right very expensive and it was pretty expensive yes and then making a call for half an hour if i if i'm correct we used, that was it was 30 dollars or something and the problem was that being in being a junior engineer you think about 30 dollars 20 dollars right mm -hmm. because that's this is your first job where you're landing after doing your marine engineering so any 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 amount of money you know is is important to you so uh, these were few reasons of course when it comes to the work and as i said merchant navy is not for everyone you know the what i had in my mind and i'm being quite open about it when i before i went to the ship i felt and i thought that maybe i'll be opening up pumps and i'll be finding out the issues and i'll be resolving the issues but unfortunately it was so that we were just doing the, you know, routine maintenance. So just opening up things, checking and putting them back. But the ship was new, couldn't find anything, couldn't find anything to fix. Now that it could have been that had I been on a, an, on an old ship, and if I was doing a lot of jobs every day, I would have thought the otherwise. So I'm, I'm just saying that it's, it was just a mind's perspective, you know? that I, I really felt that I would be doing some really hardcore engineering work as such, but I, I, I felt like that I wasn't doing so. And at the same time, I always wanted to study further. So I was like, fine, if I want to do it after two years, and if I'm not really enjoying what I'm doing now, then why shouldn't I do it now? So it was quite a, you know, quick decision. So when you played <laughs> off, I, when you played, sorry, the topic is going a little bit off, but this is also no, very, fine. Yeah, Go on. very important for people who are watching this because these, these youngsters who are coming right now thinking about money, they need to watch this video because merchant navy is not for everyone. You rightly said that. So uh, what I would want to ask you when you told your family, hey, this is not made for me. They said, hey, we have spent four years, you have spent so much money has gone because you know, Turani is not cheap. It, yeah, it comes yeah, at a very good price. So how did they react? Yes. More than money, it so was of course, a the trans answer, transformation that you were talking about. Yes, the answer was definitely no. And I was told that, uh, you know, you, you have completely gone mad and what you're doing is wrong. And um, But then uh, what I always believe in that if whatever you deliver vocally, if you deliver with a lot of confidence, if you've done your groundwork, and if you are able to, uh, you know, let let the other person know that what you're saying is what you believe in then it might work in your favor so i think that's what happened uh, i i did my groundwork i knew that i didn't want to do much in navy so you left sailing now what so yes i left sailing and then i took a three months off basically uh, wherein i did i I taught kids, 11, 12, yeah, 11, 12 grade kids, maths and physics. I also happen to be, uh, have a hard liking towards music. So I taught guitar, I taught keyboard to kids. And I was, believe it or not, I was able to make the same amount of money which I was when I was on the ship. 
So that was the first thing which I proved that I don't have to be on ship to make the same amount of money. So having said that, I was, you know, planning and seeing what I can do. I was, uh, so naval architecture came into the mind. I used to be a good student in naval architecture during my Tulani days. And uh, I was like, this is something which I can pursue. You know, ships are being built every day. Everyone needs a naval architect at some point of time. So why not? And I happened to find that only 12 seats are there in uh, in IIT for MS, MSc in Naval Arc. And which really was sort of a drawback because I didn't want to compete against Once again. For IIT. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> so... Uh, it was quite a lucky situation that my father, you know, he was he was like, okay, you you first tell me what you want to do, and we will see and try and support you. So I looked for a course in UK uh, because it was for one year, uh, and it was in MS uh, MSc Naval Architecture, and I I felt that one year is a good time for having a master's degree, and uh, let's give it a go. So long story short, it happened that way, you know. And uh, so you did your uh, you did your naval architecture and then after that what happened? So yes, uh, getting into naval architecture was pretty easy, I would say. But going through the course was a little difficult because in India we are quite used to being, you know, taught properly by the by our teachers and by our peers and by our seniors in the way that we have been told that if you don't do this, what's going to happen? If you don't study, you're going to fail. Right. But in uh, here, there was no one to tell you that. It was all you. You were considered as someone who was responsible enough to understand the depth of the situation, to understand that you were doing a master's course. So it was quite different in a way that uh, if you miss assignment, you lose the mask marks you know you don't you you don't have someone to pay heed to no one's going to listen to you and suddenly you have an exam to you know sit for so that way it was quite difficult also you know you have a, um, a dissertation to do in master's degree so in, um, mostly that's where they pay a lot of importance on because if you're doing a master's degree you have to do some sort of a research to prove that uh, you know you are uh, eligible this course and you're eligible to you know complete this course so uh but when it comes to the exams part it's i felt it was quite easy uh having having given exams in india uh, or anywhere else other than asia i would say it was pretty easy to complete the course eventually so you did a level architecture from uk then after that what came along Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I, I got sidelined. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, so, information is good information. Believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not. Uh, I was applying for jobs from the day one. I was in the UK because uh, I, I also thought that I could work part time and whatnot. And in one year, I might have applied for 500 odd jobs. And I only got two interviews by the end of the naval architecture. And the first interview, which I did, was uh, somewhere in Aberdeen. Um, and before I heard back from them, I got a second interview where I got selected as a PNI surveyor. So that was the surveying journey for me. And I took it right away. I didn't negotiate. I I didn't even think where I was. That was if you don't mind, now you can definitely disclose not your present, but the past salary. So at that time, what was the in hand salary that you were getting at that time as a PNI surveyor? It was it was very good. Uh, from I mean, uh, I would say it was around two thousand pounds. And how much were you spending that time when you were staying in UK per month? So uh, this was this was not in UK. So I it was a UK company, but I was based in Nigeria. Ah, and uh, yeah. So uh, that's that's what I meant when I said I didn't know where I was going. You know, I I just knew that this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes, and go with the flow. And sometimes going with the flow, you know, when you take a leap of faith, you know, things things work out in your favor. So it was sort of a leap of faith, and uh, 
you know, I, I, I just enjoyed the work. You know, there were so many things which I didn't know about deck, about deck machineries, about navigational equipments, about how to speak to people, to be honest. Because when you are on board the ship, you are in a small bubble of, you know, 10, 11 people and you happen to know everyone within a day or two and you know how to please people. I would, I would use that word because you have to, because you are in one team, you know, you cannot, you cannot make someone to, you know, hate you on board because you are in that scenario. But here you have to please everyone <laughs> if you want to work together, right? And you mean, diff and you meet, you will meet different personalities and, uh, it's a different culture. It's a complete cultural shock, you know, whether or not they understand proper English, you can't speak their language. So you have to communicate in a way. So it was quite interesting. And uh, yeah, I did that for about a year and a half before I moved to Lloyd's. Okay. So when you were at, uh, in Nigeria, so leaving uh, p and and joining Lloyd's was decided because your location was Nigeria or you wanted to try because we know Lloyd's is a big name in the server industry classical society. So what was the reason? Yes. So for me, um, straightforwardly, the reason was the, the brand, which was which is Lloyd's. Lloyd's. Um, and um, I I remember very correctly when I was in marine engineering as well, we did our 2G, 4G and 6G welding courses. And my 6G was signed by a Lloyd's Surveyor. And, and until now I have that uh, with me <laughs> because it was a special moment for me. I really, it was sort of a dream come true to me because when I was doing marine engineering, I was like, Lloyd's away, right? So, and will so I be a Lloyd's away yes. one day? Maybe. So you have one right now. So uh, my thing is, yes, yes. Ki, so my thing is ki after your, you started your journey as a PNI surveyor, then you, uh, you got this opportunity automatically, you were applying simultaneously after becoming a P and I surveyor, whatever opportunities you were getting. So I would say I was very hardworking in terms of my applications. Again, from the day one, when I was in Nigeria, I was applying. Uh, as I happened to know within a day, <laughs> within a day that, uh, you know, it, it it is good. Definitely. I have to focus on my work, but what are the other opportunities which I may get? I was still in the, in, in the back of my hand, uh, head. It was, sort of a thing that I am a naval architect. I've just passed out from as a naval architect uh, guy. Should I be designing ships or should I be surveying ships? I was still in that sort of a confusion. So uh, that's why the applications. And uh, it just happened so that I happened to meet one of the PV surveyors on board a ship when I was doing a PNI survey. And he was a very nice gentleman. We spoke for a while and and then I realized that possibly this is the time when, you know, I should uh, look forward to, you know, applying in Lloyd's and which I did. It took about three to four months for the whole process to go. Initially, it was no. I followed up again. It was no. I followed up. So it, it wasn't any persistence, persistence, my friend. You did not give up. Huh? Persistence. Yes. Yes. So that really, really worked well because uh, I did the interview, but it was a no. And uh, the, the reason was because I, 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 I was in Nigeria and I wanted to be in Nigeria at that point of time. And uh, they were looking for someone who could roam around uh, Africa, basically. So I think I was just lucky that uh, I got that opportunity. And, uh, you know, I, I came to Dubai in Lloyd's. So which year did you join Lloyd's Dubai? This was 2014. So 2014, you joined Lloyd's Dubai and the first yeah. rank that you got was? It was assistant surveyor. And so what was your uh, job profile like as an assistant surveyor? So uh, it was the same as it would be for uh, a surveyor or a senior surveyor or a lead surveyor or principal surveyor, different class societies name it different, uh, give the different terminologies. Uh, but having said that, it is it is like a junior most position in like how you would say a junior most officer on board a ship. So maximum so class, maximum, slogging, maximum ships where nobody else wants to go. Maybe this, uh, assistant <laughs> engineer, assistant server has to go there. No, 
I wouldn't agree to it because uh, I would I will not agree to it because um, that's the difference I particularly fa- found when you work on ships and you work a show. So a show it all depends on how you portray yourself. How confident are you at your work? How much do you know? How, how the way you ask things it all matters on on that. And I I realize that you know it's definitely it's not the way. It is in Nigeria. This is glass. You know, you got to know Solas. You got to know Marpol. It should be by hearted to you because you got to answer the captain or the chief engineer and tell him if something is wrong, why it is wrong, right? So, uh, the the good thing was that uh, during that time I was on training, so I was allowed to ask questions. I was allowed to, um, uh, you know, uh, ask any sort of questions in terms of travel and surveying. Just, just so. Um, yeah, it was, it, it went within six months, I would say I was authorized for most of the things. And I was doing surveys by one year after one year or something alone. Before that, we were always with. Somebody. So you were going alone, doing all these surveys confidently, giving reports, and people at all, you were happy yeah. with all the observations that you were giving. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So a lot of study yeah. must have been required, yeah. But love, uh, yes. Doing surveys and coming back, going through all the circulars, going through all the books. Yes, yes. Huh? A lot of slogging. It was, it was. I would, I remember still, I was uh, living in a smaller apartment when I moved to Dubai. And I would come home by five or six because, you know, I, I could go early since I was on training. And the moment I used to be at home, six o'clock, I would just open the rule finder, which is our uh, Bible. And I would just read through it <laughs> until the time I could. And that was my daily routine because I, I felt that I needed to learn. And uh, why I felt it? Because I could see other surveys from all the other class societies who knew so much and I knew so little. So that was something which was sort of a motivation to read and do things which I thought I will never do when I was on, on board ships, right? So it's been nine years. Do you still read the room finder regularly? Or now it has become regularly. 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 I still do. Uh, because the reason is that every day, uh, you know, some new IMO requirements come, some MSC requirements keep changing. And uh, we have a tool wherein we are able to find everything which is up to date. We don't have to Google anything. So as I said, that's our Bible. And you know, ev- like how every day you say you know, namaskaram to our God and, you know, say hello to our, you know, God. The same way you say hello to this Bible of ours. Great. So one disadvantage or maybe advantage I can say of being a surveyor is that you keep learning or you have to learn. So you keep learning. Yeah. If you're visiting, you're curious, this is a good job for you. But if you hate learning, then this is not a job made for you. Like, no change is not made for everyone. Even survey job is not made for everyone. Am I right? Are you right? That's true. That's true. Comparatively to any other job in this job, I would say you require to be updated with the rules and requirements because you are expected to be. Okay. So it's been nine years. So after becoming assistant survey within one year, you were doing independently surveys. Then what was the next step that you got? Yes. So I was promoted to surveyor and uh, simultaneously i was uh, in charge of uh, doing service supplier audits um in within the uae region uh, meaning i was the first point of contact for uh, third party companies who wants to get approval from lloyds that was something which i took uh, interest in personally because i was also inter- interested in doing audits etc so that went on for about 3 years and uh, then I was promoted to senior surveyor. And uh, I was, since I was interested in doing audits, I am now a lead auditor for ISMI Space MLC as well. I also am qualified to do ISO audits. So basically these kind of things. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's been a good journey, I would say. Okay. So from assistant surveyor to surveyor to the senior surveyor, I would say, and then also doing a lot of audits, continuous studies going on. 
Now let's talk about another aspect. Now, it, as uh, you don't have to talk about lot, but a general perception, like how much does a surveyor get paid? Because this is something which is very crucial for those new joiners who want to quit sailing and who want to come for becoming a surveyor. What can right. they expect? So this right. is something that I would well, like. Right. Well, what they cannot expect is what they earn on board. That's definitely there. So everyone, you know, we, we as human beings, we try to think that I'm getting this now. And I'm. we just see in terms of money straight away, which I, I've learned a hard way is a wrong thing to do. Uh, but having said that, um, somewhere around, you know, $5,000 to $12,000. And I saw this figure from your blogs as well. So that's something which which I would say is accurate. Now, why there's a, such a big difference and why there is a range mm -hmm. is uh, because it matters from place to place, right? At some place, your expenditures are high and that accordingly you are getting paid. And at some place, the, you know, the currency rate is low and the expenditures are low. And accordingly, the salary is low. But then uh, if someone is not thinking only about the salary, there's there are some perks which a surveyors get you know like the moment you start from your home most of the class societies your time starts meaning that uh you know you can log that time against your working hours like how it is on board the ship you know and if you are exceeding the minimum amount of hours which you're supposed to work then you are accordingly compensated you know either as a time off or as overtime so these kind of things are there uh you know other perks uh, can be you know of course because your job requires you to travel depending on the location you can be provided a, either a car or you know a travel pass depending on different countries things like that uh so yeah it's uh, in, in all in all um i since i am in this profession i like this profession i believe that it's a it's a good move for someone who has a good amount of experience on board and is wanting to be with their families then it's a good profession to join so five thousand dollars to twelve thousand dollars a month depending on whether you are in uk or you are in europe or you are in dubai or even in india it will keep changing it will keep varying depending on the Correct. standard out there but the difference is to today ten thousand dollars is what a chief is getting on board ship, but he's getting for six months. You divide it by half, it becomes five thousand dollars a month on a constant base salaries. So approximately the same. Like what can I say? Even if chalo, we say that the salary is more on the ship, but definitely has to be because the sacrifices are more. What are the other perks apart from living with your family uh, that you have when you become a surveyor? For example, in terms of work, that I decide, I can decide my day. Uh, when I become independent, uh, and it also depends on your boss, uh, you can decide your day. For example, if you're a chief engineer and you have full faith in your second engineer, then you would say, second, please plan the day today. And uh, I will just come, you know, two, three times during the day to the engine room just to take a round, just to monitor as to what's happening. Something similar. So, uh, but having said that, every surveyor has the authority to decide their day in terms of what time they want to attend the ship. Now, when I say what time they want to attend the ship, it means that depending on the ship's schedule, of course, we can't say that we can't tell the owners to change the schedule. <laughs> so we have to, of course, follow the ship's schedule. Um, so it, it goes in a good way and a bad way, because sometimes a ship is coming at 10, 10 o'clock at the night and you've had your already long day, but you still have to attend the ship at night. So the planning should be good. So if the planning is good, you enjoy it. If the planning is bad, then of course the the whole survey, the whole audit can go wrong. So I would say I enjoy this independentness when it comes to surveying. That suppose it's an ongoing job in a dry dock, and I want to inspect the boiler. Now tomorrow, for example, nine o'clock they have a meeting, and boiler will be ready by ten o'clock. So I can go ten o'clock to the ship. I don't have to leave my house at eight o'clock. You know, I could do reporting from eight to ten. You know, make sure that everything is planned, make sure that the chief engineer has been informed as to what all has been done and uh, these kind of things. And also I can 
leave possibly in the afternoon and come back by the night it all depends on how what kind of survey it is more flexibility um, more i would say more uh, uh, you know family time you can expect if uh, you are doing routine jobs so you feel like that you are in a place where everything is in harmony you know, in okay. a way ah out of context but still i do not know whether you will allow me to put this in video or not it depends on you but any plans of coming back to india sometime sooner or later yes i have uh, and that's when uh, most likely when i i'm planning to retire but uh, uh, not before that yes before that so if i ask you in the end just two questions one best thing that you like about being a surveyor i like the control ah uh, i i really enjoy it i like the control and uh, but for having that you must know everything so i have worked really hard to achieve that you know i mean i i'm i'm sure you can imagine 26 year old surveyor going on board uh, meeting a captain who's 60 year old having a command for 35 years meeting a chief engineer who's 55 year old having a command for again 30 35 years is a challenging thing to do and i i have faced i have faced criticism on board that uh, things like who's this young guy who possibly knows nothing about what i do on the ship etc and we happen to get these sort of uh, you know judgments about people so from there i realized that maybe there is something wrong with me and i need to change i need to learn i need to read and that builds up the confidence and the control so having knowing how to control a survey and an audit is quite an important thing because if you can't control it then you can't do it so that's something which i really enjoy and knowledge is power you know that if you know the things even if there is a captain who is 30 years in command he will respect you not for your age not for rank but also for the knowledge that you have absolutely absolutely i completely okay. believe in that okay this is one thing that you like one thing that you i won't say hate is a strong word but you you think that this thing can certainly like. in the serving thing one thing where you feel this right. is right so at times it happens that uh, you know the work uh, hours and the amount of work it it becomes more and that happens everywhere but then um, uh, so it, there there are many days when you know i'm i'm gone in the morning say 7:30 8 o'clock and uh, the temperatures are high in this part of the world and we are doing ballast tanks cargo tanks we are in the dock bottom surveying the ship you know propeller is being opened up we are doing dive and train mpi on the tail shaft and everything has to be done today so that becomes challenging when when you have enough time and you distribute work then becomes easy but sometimes it's a client's demand the ship has to leave if the ship doesn't leave the dry dock it's going to cost a lot to the owners so you you are not just managing the survey you are managing people around you you are you know accountable for your actions so you have to be there on time you have to you know complete the work on time and you have to deliver the results which is giving the certificates and uh, you have to do it correctly because one mistake you do <laughs> you can't ask things to be opened up again <laughs> so <laughs> that becomes quite challenging and in your journey a lot of comments will come on the video and you will always be there to help me so that we can solve the queries with this all i can Absolutely. say is thank you very much jai hind jai bharat jai mata thank you pranay